Can you guess what hormonal imbalance causes hiatal hernia? It's one of the most common imbalances in U.S. adults, and it's frequently misdiagnosed. It's hypothyroid, and the way it creates hiatal hernia is in three key ways, having to do with muscle contraction, having to do with the motility of your food, how fast it moves through your intestines, as well as the fact that it causes constipation and bloating. So let's jump into how all these factors work, and the fact that Hypothyroid is so frequently misdiagnosed and underdiagnosed is something you really want to consider because the thyroid, I mean, there's no organ that's not important in the human body, but when you have a thyroid that's malfunctioning, it can create such a host of problems, including hiatal hernia, which I think most of you would agree that wouldn't be on the top of your list of what, of what your low thyroid was causing. So um, to start with the first one, muscle contractility or, or how muscles contract, specifically the valves. So we talk about the sphincters or valves that are in your esophagus. There's an upper one and a lower one. And what these valves are all about is as food is traveling from your mouth down, um, they they open when food and drink is is coming and then they they close back up after it's passed and they, and they create a bit of a downward pressure to make sure that everything is going from top down that's the only direction everything is supposed to go in your gut is top down so Acid shouldn't come up your esophagus. Food shouldn't come up your esophagus. Bile shouldn't go up into your stomach. None of it should go in the wrong direction. And you have about 10 to 15 valves or sphincters in your body that are dedicated to just that motion of top down and making sure that contents move in the right direction. So when you have hypothyroid, all of these sphincters are affected. I'm specifically talking about acid reflux and hiatal hernia here, which has to do with uh, the stomach pushing up into the diaphragm and the sphincters not working well, but you have a sphincter at the bottom of your stomach and at um, the opening to your gallbladder going into your small intestine and your pancreas going into your small intestine. It, there are many of them and they're all very critical to your optimal digestion, but it all has to do with the fact these muscles are affected when you have low thyroid. Then you have slowed motility. So now there's just the motion top down, but everything has a bit of a rhythm in your gut. And when that rhythm slows, then things are not absorbed the way they should. They hang around too long. When they do that, bad bacteria can multiply and procreate and create uh, an imbalance called dysbiosis in your colon. Dysbiosis just means bad bacteria, an imbalance of bacteria in your gut. And those bacteria are responsible for not only good digestion, but also the health of your immune system and hormonal uh, balance. And whether you're pro-inflammatory, if you have inflammation or you're in an anti-inflammatory state, which is very health promoting. So very key that motility, things are moving the way they should. And, and that really segues nice into the third point, which is that when you have hypothyroid, you have constipation and bloat. So things are moving so slowly, your, your colon is not emptying the way it should. And what the um, constipation and, and bloat causes is a lot of pressure, as does the slowed motility, point two. So both of these, the slowed motility, the constipation, they're creating increased intra-abdominal pressure, pressure within your abdomen that uh, really creates uh, pressure on your stomach. It's forced up acid goes up as well as that pressure widens that opening of where your esophagus passes through your diaphragm which is the definition of hiatal hernia the stomach's pushed up above the diaphragm when it should be below so th that's the association that's how that um, that connection works and i think the important thing is to really f get yourself with a clinician who's gonna properly diagnose you if you have hypothyroid or uh, borderline hypothyroid. Because unfortunately, thyroid is not looked at in depth enough in our standard uh, traditional clinical practices. They're looking for way out of line thyroids, not, not 
non-optimal okay so he you know what we do here is is we look for optimal ranges and and that's what I do and I'm talking to patients it's like normal you know might be here it's really uh, too big a range we want optimal functioning so as soon as you've left optimal you are to a degree malfunctioning and that needs to be addressed so um, find yourself a clinician who who really knows how to dive deep and, and do a thorough look at your thyroid not just the one hormone that's typically on the annual physical uh, well worth your while especially if you're battling with any of these symptoms so I hope you found this helpful uh, if you did give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel we're trying to increase our subscribers so that more people can get exposed to this information and, and really be um, more in control of their health and, and be able to make decisions about feeling better and enjoying their life more because they've regained their health so um, and send me a comment I answer all my comments I love hearing from you and I appreciate you we'll talk soon